Good evening, you're listening to Curtain Call. I'm Ellie, and um, today in the studio, I've got some guests from the University of Kent Players. I'm just going to get them to go around now and introduce themselves and their role within the University of Kent Players. Hi, I'm Vicky, and I'm currently directing the production we're here to talk about today. Hi, I'm Zarina, and I play the female lead in the production that we're currently putting on. <laughs> and I'm James, and I'm playing the male lead. Cool. Um, so we're going to go to Vicky, who's going to explain the production, because I feel like there was a bit of secretism there. Um, so we're now going to reveal what that production is. Just building the tension, that's all. <laughs> um, so um, the University of Kent Players are a staff group based on campus. Um, been running for four and a half, five years now. And we regularly put on productions, normally two in the Gabenkian. But for a bit of a change, we are doing a live staged radio play in Mungo's this year. And the play itself is The Scarlet Pimpernel. Um, so did you pick the play or what made you choose that? Uh, I have to confess, I picked the play alongside my assistant director, Kevin White, who's sitting on the sofa looking quite comfy <laughs> over there. Um, <laughs> we, um, we did the Philadelphia Story, which is a classic movie starring Catherine Hepburn from um, 1940s last year. And uh, we're looking for something a bit more action adventure this year. Um, so, do you put on productions every year with the University of Kent players? Yeah, we do. Um, we do two in the Gelbenkian, normally one in April and one in September. And then uh, this is the second time we've done a radio production. The first year was in... Um, so, guys, without giving too much away, could you just give the people on radio a little bit of a plot? Well, The Scarlet Pimpernel is a very famous um, story and play about a English nobleman who goes off to rescue nobles who are under the threat of the guillotine in France. He has a secret identity only known as the Scarlet Pimpernel and his true identity is only known to his very close circle of friends. James Manning plays the Scarlet Pimpernel. Um, and so one of the interesting things is that although um, the, the Scarlet Pimpernel's identity is known by a circle of his close friends, it's not something that's known by his wife. Um, and he's a little unsure as to whether or not he can trust her because of things that have happened in the past. Um, so the, the story develops really of, of their relationship and how although they met and fell in love, over a period of time their relationship has become strained um, and there's this sort of secret um, gnawing away really at both of them. Um, so it does sound quite a complex, a complex plot there. Um, so James, you're pay playing the main male lead in the production. Um, is this the first time you've played a male lead, like a main character? It's not actually. Um, I, so I joined the players about three years ago, um, and it was the first time I'd done any acting since I was oof, probably about eighteen or nineteen. So it'd been a, a few years, and I was lucky enough that the first time out, I ended up playing. Um, the lead in Pride and Prejudice so I ended up being Mr Darcy on my return to the stage after about uh, 20 years of not doing anything which was a, a little bit unnerving but a, a really great experience and, and I was really well supported by the rest of the Kent players um, and it's sort of given me the, the, the feeling that I could go on and, and do other leading roles um, which is really how I've ended up here. Um, so could you just tell us a little bit about who your character is and how sort of how you've come about playing it? Have you found any difficulties along the way of playing your character or? Well, there's a lot of fun to be had um, playing the Scarlet Pimpernel. He's he's a master of disguise. He rescues aristocrats, sometimes from, you know, almost directly beneath the blades of the guillotine. So he, he's adept at sneaking in and out of, of highly charged situations. Um, because this is obviously a radio play, it's meant that there's been an awful lot of work on trying to come up with some different voices to, to um, signify when I'm in disguise. Uh, so that's that's been an awful lot of fun through the production, is trying out lots of different voices. Um, could you could you give us an example of one of those voices? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's the sort of thing you'd probably need to buy tickets for. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, Zarina, you are the main female lead. Um, so like James, could you just tell us a little bit about who your character is and whether maybe you could relate to it, your character or...? Well, I play Marguerite Blakeney, who is a French woman who um, has married Percy Blakeney and has no idea he is the Scarlet Pimpernel. She just knows that he, over the last couple of years, has withdrawn from her and she doesn't know why. So this is a message of discovery for her, as it is for everybody else. So you sort of discover things at the same time that she does, and it all comes as a very big surprise to her. 
and in the end she has to decide what she whether she's going to really declare her love for him and you have to come to the play and find out what happens <laughs> um so i was to realize that you two are the main characters how many other members of the in are there in the cast um, our cast is quite large. We have nine members of cast uh, playing a variety of characters, guards and innkeepers and barbers and uh, all the rest of it. Um, and we also have um, a technical team, which is fronted up by my lovely assistant director, Kevin. Um, and um, we also have two members of our Foley team. Now, our Foley team are doing something a bit different with this because it's a radio play and we're staging it live. Um, they are creating the soundscape for the production which means we have uh, a very cute miniature door uh, which they are able to it's open worth the price close. of the ticket just to come and see the door actually. <laughs> it really is excellent craftsmanship went on um, they do footsteps they're pretending to be horses and carriages um, and we are very much relying on Monty Python's coconuts for uh, horses currently um, they are um probably got the tougher job actually because they've got they're on the go the whole production really timing is everything mm. timing is everything for this and um it's quite interesting if the audience does watch what the foley are doing to think oh my gosh that's how they make that noise mm. yeah we're having a slight trouble with one of our end noises um which we're hoping to have resolved by friday so is this the first time the university of camp players have put on a radio play uh, no, this is the second for us, um, but actually the first for Zarina and James. They haven't done one before, so it's been interesting to see how, stepping into the lead roles, how they've been able to manage that. Um, so, looking back to the, the lead roles then, um, so James, being a radio player, I know you said about the voices and having to work on that a bit more. Is there anything else that you felt that's been a little bit more difficult than perhaps when you were Mr Darcy in Pride and Prejudice? Well, it's obviously a very different process um, because you're um, you're trying to convey everything really through the the voice alone. Um, whereas in a traditional play, you'd be able to, to characterise it more physically, um, and you could you could show certain emotions or expressions or actions physically. Whereas with the radio play, you are very much reliant on the fact that you're you know you're having to just use the words to get this across um, so we're not really we're not acting towards each other for the most part it, it's very much delivered you know standing up at a microphone with a view to, to getting the audience sort of really drawn into the story um, sort of so we're main, maintaining some eye contact with the audience as well as with the, the cast members as well um, so just to let you know this production is happening on the 30th of November and the 1st of December so that's Friday and Saturday this week in Mungo's and they're going to let you know how you can get your hands on some tickets yeah, indeed. Um, we uh, currently uh, are posting all over our social media um, and we are running a weekly blog, um, but we can sell tickets via Eventbrite. So if you go to the University of Kent Players website, there's links there. Or you can go to Eventbrite's site itself and actually search for Scarlet Pimpernel and you'll find us there. And how much are tickets? Uh, tickets, we are doing £6.50 for full price tickets, but we are also doing concessions for students and unemployed and uh, anyone else who feels that they deserve one for £6. <laughs> um, and Serena, you mentioned earlier that you're encouraging the audience to dress up. Yes, this is a 1940s style production, so we're encouraging people to get out their glad rags and dress up. We want dinner suits, we want evening dresses, fascinators, anything like that. Come along and join in the whole fun that we're going to have having to be dressed up to the nines. Oh yeah, the cast look amazing. It's it's fully, they're all in DJs and beautiful evening dresses. Um, and we're very lucky the uh, students from Canterbury College are coming up to do hair and makeup for us. So we're doing a bit of community outreach to help them support their portfolio work as well, which is really brilliant. Yeah, they're very good for us. They've done that for various different productions for us before. Um, and sometimes we throw them a curveball such as, oh, we need Regency style hairstyles. <laughs> At least for this one, they only have to go back to 1940. <laughs> Um, so I know you've given the website, but do you have any social media platforms people can look up you on? Yeah, we do. We are currently posting on uh, Twitter and Instagram as well as Facebook. Um, we've been really lucky. Um, Sophie, our uh, marketing lead, who's been doing an amazing job. And if you come across one of our flyers in Mungo's, we've actually got a QR code on the poster. So you don't even need to think about it and write it down because the QR code will get you straight to where you need to be to buy those tickets to come along and see us. Um, so for anyone who can't get their hands on a flyer, do you have a username for Instagram? We do. It is the University of Kent Players um, and um, we have got the same handle across all of our social media. 
Cool. Um, so if anyone else wants to get involved in the University of Kent players, how would they go about doing that? Um, well, we're predominantly a staff group at the moment and we reach out to other um, elements within the university, as we said, Kent Tech earlier. Um, we are always on the lookout for new people, so we um, would encourage anybody to uh, contact us via Facebook um, or via our website or um, email players at kent.ac.uk. And we also also um, take a stand at the staff induction fairs and things like that. If there's any staff listening, we will be at the next one, which will be in January. You can come and see some things about previous productions. Come and have a chat to us all. And don't worry, we're not going to ask you to act if that's not what you want to do. We're always looking for tech and we're always looking for backstage, stage managers and anything else who can help us out. And we also would like to say that um, although we say we are a staff group, which we are, we're not talking necessarily current staff. We are talking previous, future past <laughs> um, so in terms of sort of a production if when you're putting on a production what's like the rehearsal schedule like how how often is that well I mean that's it, it sort of builds up really to a fairly intense couple of weeks before production um, so for, for something like this radio play which um, because we've sort of all got the scripts as we're standing at the mics we don't need to know quite as well um, it's a much shorter run, so I think we've been rehearsing. I think it was six weeks, wasn't it? It was, it was six it's, weeks from start to production. Yeah, so there's not not really a huge amount of time for some of the the bigger things. The the things in the Gulbenkian, we will be running rehearsals sort of two nights a week for three months, I guess, for About for three those months, ones. Yeah. Um, and those can involve fairly complicated sort of dance scenes as well as standard acting scenes. Um, so it, it starts off, it's all fairly light-hearted all the way through, really. Um, we're always, you know, trying to cut out the mucking around so that we can do some acting. Um, but it's, it's just Speaking a fun process. Speaking as a director, that is very true. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it is a fun process. It gets a little more serious the closer we get to production. But um, you The know, whole idea is we've always said that if you're not having fun with it, then we're doing something wrong. Because if people have fun, they give in much better performances. Mm, very true. Um, so I know you were saying about don't worry about if you don't want to act. Um, so Vic, I'm just going to go to you. So I know you're directing Scarlet Pimpernel. Is this the first time you've directed? Um, <laughs> for the group, no. Um, I've I directed the previous uh, radio play that we've done, and I've also done two stage productions. Um, I did a, a farce that was called Cash on Delivery, but I also did um, Weird Sisters a couple of years ago, which is an adaptation of the Terry Pratchett book, um, which was yeah that was an interesting challenge with witches and wizards and players and um a whole host of evil dukes and duchesses so very very good fun so we do look out for directors and stuff as well mm. we generally end up with a production director and a stage director yeah and we sort of help people out i've directed two performances for the players as well so we will we will put up new people with someone who's mm. experienced to actually get them that chance to go ahead and and do something yeah and would you recommend directing then if you've directed before? Well, I keep coming back, so <laughs> I kind of think that's probably a yes. Um, I I really sit between uh, two stools of whether I prefer directing or acting, and I can never decide. And normally I prefer the other one when I'm not doing it. Um, but I have directing the radio play is incredibly good. For, it's extremely hard work because it's such a short run, but you're doing the same amount of work. But it is such good fun and it, it's so entertaining in rehearsals to sit down and, and have everyone else perform the, the piece and just be laughing and entertained and looking like they're enjoying being there. It's a real pleasure to be able to, to be involved in that. And of course, I love bossing people around. Yeah, we can vouch for that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so thank you very much for coming to speak to me today. <laughs> so um, that was the University of Kent players talking about their current production, The Scarlet Pimpernel, which will be being performed on the 30th of November and the 1st of December, Friday and Saturday this week in Mungo's. You can get your tickets um, online or at if you follow them on social media at University of Kent players. So good luck, guys. Enjoy. Thank you very, much. very much. Thank you very much.